G'day guys, welcome back to G-Man Speaks. Today we're going to take a look uh, at a video by a, uh, a very large YouTuber called Courtney Ryan. So the original video is in the description, go check her out if you enjoy it and want to check out the original Uninterrupted. Um, this video is about what to do when you get ghosted. Um, so without further ado, we'll jump in, I'll stop it, chime in where needed. And today we're talking all about being ghosted. So you've been ghosted, or at least I'm guessing so if you clicked on this video. Don't worry, I've been there too. And I'm gonna say that, and a lot of you are probably not going to believe me. So if you wanna hear the story of how I got ghosted and what happened to me, stick around because I'm gonna tell the story at the very end of the video. So my tip is, it's a Chad story. Uh, it's Chad, Bryce, Steve-O, uh, a ghost of it. It wouldn't be a nice guy. Uh, a good old genuine good fellow. Uh, it'll be something like that. So we'll watch it through and we'll listen to a story at the end. But that's my tip. And guys, I haven't watched this video. I watched about maybe two minutes of it to see if any of the content was worth talking about. I think it's not a bad video, but it has an, uh, a bit of content in here that allows me to draw out some talking points that are more relevant for you guys at home. And myself, I'll share some of my own experiences along the way. So maybe things were going really well, you had a date or two, and then out of nowhere, all of a sudden, communication totally shut off, poof, they're gone out of nowhere. You're probably sitting there wondering what the heck happened, and I'm gonna talk about that today. You're probably feeling a little bit confused, and I think it's incredibly normal to feel that way. This is a lot more common these days with the rise of dating apps and the wide array of options that most people have available at their fingertips. Nice Especially women, let's be honest. I think men experience ghosting a little bit more than women do. Um, so just throwing that out there. So today, all right. and I will see you all sure. next time. So just throwing that out there. So today I'm going to be going over some advice I have for all of you guys that have experienced this, or maybe you're going through it, as well as some what to do and what not to do's in response to the ghosting. So point number one. All right. So before she gets started, she made a good point. Look, we'll give her that. Um, yes, the reality is the rise of dating apps, all the different applications out there. Like how many dating apps are there? Like major ones, what, five, six? I don't know how many. I don't use them anymore. Maybe there's more new ones. There's Hinge, Bubble, Tinder, RSVP, fucking, you name it. It's there. Plenty of fish. You know, you dirty boys at home love you. Plenty of fish. And then you got the uh, online websites. Oasis Active. I'm not sure if that's still going or not, mate. That was an absolute cesspool back in the day. You know, um, eHarmony, all those sort of paid ones, all the Match.com ones that are out there, which is basically the the monopoly that they have on all of them. So, some way, at some point across the line, most guys, I basically, I think every guy, every single guy, would have experienced this a multiple amount of times. You're on a dating app, you're talking to a girl, you finally got in a match, right? And she seems somewhat normal um, and she looks somewhat attractive and you're thinking you're onto something. You think you got a strong lead. You're having a chat to her. Next thing you know, either poof, conversation's ended, deleted, or they just stop talking to you at all. Now, why is that? I'll tell you exactly why that is. Um, I'll shoot from the hip. More or less, guys, um, you got to think about it from a female perspective. And the amount of opportunities and abundance that they have in life. You think, you just gotta have to think about this and be balanced about it. They would get so many matches every single day. So regardless of whether or not at that specific time that you're talking to them, that they're attracted to you, they wanna to get to know you. All it takes is one match from somebody else that seemed better than you, or it's just new and exciting. You know, There's just so much variety and short t attention spans that this happens very, very often. So think about how many matches a woman gets, how many guys start talking to them every day. All they need to do is have someone shiny, new, sexy, attractive guy with nice pictures and the fantasy in their mind goes from you over to them and you're forgotten about. That's just the long and short of it. It's the same as, say you're talking to a bunch of girls. If you're able to be successful on dating apps as a man, it's very difficult. Say you're talking to a bunch of girls and you're only out for monster hunting or you want some action. Right, which is most guys do, believe it or not. A lot of guys will, will say, oh no, I'm on there to meet a girlfriend. But your first immediate thing you're on there for is to meet chicks to try and shag them. That's just the reality of it. And yes, then it can develop from there. If you're talking to a bunch of girls and then you find that, say, you have a really strong lead, you think she's sort of, you're trying to vibe her out. You're trying to see if she's going to be aligned to what you want to get out of it. You know, you're trying to be subtle. And you get a gut feeling that she's not going to put out 
or you're not going to get what you want out of it, or it's going to be too much work, or there's too much uncertainty, right, with the result, and it's going to cost you money and all this sort of stuff that we don't like doing. We don't like spending money without a result. So another girl will come along, and she just comes across as a lot more fun, um, open-minded, and look, easier really to get into bed than that one. You're going to drop that other one, and you're going to take this one. That's the same thing. Put the shoe on the other foot. A woman's just going to have a shiny guy come along. I call it shiny, like, like a magpie. A shiny new item comes along. You get forgotten about because now in their mind, they, they've matched with this other guy. Brucey's come along. Brucey, Brycey, um, Rodney. The finance guy with the suit on and he's got nice pictures and he's got his little, you know, private schoolboy photos and that shows that, you know, implied level of wealth and you, you're a tradie holding a fish or whatever it is and you're gone. That's just the reality of it. The thing about it is a lot of guys get upset about it um, because they're not used to that. So they go on there, they get they, they take it as a sign of rejection. You don't take it as a sign of rejection, just take it as a sign of it's a numbers game. And unfortunately, you went the most attractive option at that point in time, and you're going to get dropped. Now, I can tell you from direct experience, guys, that happens to me hundreds, if not thousands and thousands of times. You just got to not take it to heart. It's just it is what it is. You're going to get dropped. Um, it's better they do it then and there um, than when you actually get to know them and start liking them because that also happens a lot too. Also, what I've also happened um, on the dating apps, guys, is flaking. I, I take it as a sense of ghosting as well. Flaking, ghosting, I, I use them very similar um, but flaking, what's flaking? It's when you've set up a date um, and you have something locked in, you've agreed it, a time and place, whatever it may be, uh, a coffee, walk, meal, movie, whatever it is, um, and actually five minutes or an hour before you're supposed to catch up, whatever it is, you get a stupid um, excuse um, that they're not going to turn up for whatever reason. Generally, the bad excuse is you can tell you can see them a mile away. Sometimes they might be legitimate, but I think most of the time you got to hear something like, oh, my best friend broke up with her boyfriend and I've got to go there, or my sister broke up with her husband, or whatever it might be. Something along those lines just to try and get out of it. They need to rush there to help, so they need to drop you. I can tell you right now, guys, if a girl likes you, she would drop all of her friends. They could be hanging off a cliff uh, with their hand, right? They're hanging there with their hand and they're like, oh, help me, help me. They go, no, nah, i got to go see G-Man. Bang, chick falls off into the dude, know, her best friend falls into the ocean. They couldn't give a shit. So don't don't go seeing that as something virtuous that they've gone and been a great friend. No, they've just used an easy excuse that's not overly easily challengeable, defensible um, to get rid of you. The girl likes you, she'll never ghost you and she'll actually crawl through dirt and glass and whatever to suck the tip of your knob. Like That's just the reality of it. So... Once again, doing your favours there. So they're the two forms that I know that many men get very frustrated with. Then you got your other forms. So you, I've had this happen, guys. And I've got a lot of experience in this because I did this for bloody years. Like just, just like rampantly on the dating apps. I'm trying to date, trying to make girls. Like every other young man with a you know, high testosterone. You know, you just, you, that's what you do for fun. Trying to pick up chicks off the internet. But, but what I notice a lot too is they have no issues with, um, even if you're going on dates, multiple dates, um, you're getting to know them, uh, uh, you've maybe even slept together, whatever it is. What you have to realize is they're multi-dating a lot of the time. So the one, just because you're going out with them and sleeping with them, a lot of guys assume that you're exclusive with them. No, no, they're just multi-juggling and doing the same thing with other guys and then they finally select one of the other guys to maybe be exclusive with, you'll get blocked. You won't even get, you won't even tell you most of the time. You'll get blocked, deleted, just all of a sudden they're gone off a dating app or they're not responding to messages, the message is uh, message not sent or whatever it is that comes back when you've been blocked or try and call them, you know, go through to the voicemail or whatever it is. It happens to us, it happens to the best of us. That's what annoys me. A lot of guys, um, they stay in bad relationships with women or bad scenarios or they get dragged along into things they don't want to be in because they're worried about hurting women's feelings. Let me tell you now, guys, they couldn't give two shits about your feelings. If they're not interested in you, they don't give a stuff. They'll just block to let you move on. Not even think about you ever again while you're sitting there wondering what happened, thinking, oh, that really hurts. Maybe maybe she'll come and talk to me again. No, they won't, and, and, and that's it. All right, let's go through her tips now. I've gotten that out of the way.
Number one, I want you guys to understand so that you feel a little less bad about it is to understand that it says more about them than it says about you. Yep. And it often has much more to do with the other person than it does about you. It's not always personal. Maybe they met someone else. Yep. Maybe they weren't feeling it with you and didn't want to be mean, which I don't agree with. I think that we should all be honest. So the reason people do this is often not to be malicious or hurtful, but to really just avoid a tough conversation and conflict on their end. To put it simply, this person just really lacks the skills to be honest and upfront, which is not a good sign and says more about them than it says about you. While I think we can all agree- Which is basically most chicks out there, especially on dating apps, which are all multi-dating. It's very true, she makes a good point. It says a lot about them. It goes to show that they don't have consideration for how men feel and they're using uh, a lot of men as a dating game. And that's the way, I'm talking about, not all women guys, but I'm talking about the ones that are perpetually on there, cycling through guys. You know, you might take two years off and all of a sudden you go back and all the same chicks are on there with the same photos, doing the same thing. You know, it's these types of girls that they live the dream, they go with different guys all the time. It becomes like an addiction. They can't stop doing it. It's like a dopamine hit, um, like, 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 like running the, um, like the lottery is scratching a lottery ticket. So they keep matching and swiping and going out with different guys, trying to get a higher high every time or hoping that the great white buffalo comes along. <clears throat> the mysterious man comes along that they've been looking for. He doesn't exist. He never will come. Um, and eventually he'll come. If they just keep rejecting dudes and ghosting him and working their way through. As, as, as we say, guys, there's an army of guys out there who will give their lives, spend all their money, do whatever they've got to do to take women on dates, and then they get an inflated sense of self, an uh, inflated sense of entitlement, um, inflated, just distorted sense of just reality uh, to the point where they're just completely unreasonable and reject guys for the smallest reasons or block them for the... Smallest little icks, as they call them. Hate that word, but smallest little icks. So it's not on you. It is on them. Um, and it's the majority of them, unfortunately, they're on these dating apps. Still, That's why they're still there, because they're not mature enough mentally to conduct themselves like adults. But I'll tell you guys another story, and I'm ranting on a bit on this one. I know you guys like the personal sort of blog stuff. So I, for those of you who don't know, who are new to the channel, um, guys, I was married um, for a short period of time. I was married to a girl I never should have been married to. I take full accountability for it. There's someone completely not aligned to me. You know, um, it's completely not aligned in life, beliefs in life, um, fundamentals in life just weren't, uh, weren't aligned. She pressured me to sort of do the whole marriage thing um, and oh, I went along with it. So I take full accountability. I didn't put a boundary. I didn't end it. I went along with it, got divorced, had a really bad time. But... I'll tell you the way that I got separated from was things weren't going very well. We're arguing, things are just things are just going to shit. We were sleeping in separate bedrooms. Um, she was going out late, you know, I couldn't reach her. Um, she was just treating me very disrespectfully, stonewalling me, just not really talking to me, making me um, really walk on eggshells in my own house. Um, and one day I come home from work. We had we'd had a minor argument in the morning. Um, she came, I came home from work and she'd moved out of the house and moved back to her parents' house. Um, and she separated from me without really telling me she was moving out. She had dropped the, oh, we should think about getting divorced. She did drop that in that, that morning in an argument. I'll give her that. But she didn't say she was going to do that. She didn't say, you know, um, there's going to be more talk and consideration for how I might take that and what was the most adult approach. We all knew it was coming to an end. No, she just moved out of the house, took all the things that she wanted to take. And I never really spoke to her properly ever again after that. It was all through lawyers and legal um, processes, you know, and the family court and stuff like that. So as I said, guys, they don't, they don't care about your feelings if they don't want you. So that's another point I always make to guys. If you're not sure about someone, um, you're not 100% on it, uh, be like, oh, she has her exams coming up and I don't want to upset her or she's got a new job and I don't want to upset her at the start of a new job or whatever it might be, whatever excuse you make up for putting your head in the sand and not getting rid of it or getting out of a situation you realize you don't want to be in, don't give a fuck about you. So the second that they don't care, you could be married to them for 20 years they will drop you like a hot rock and take the last two bucks out of your pocket when you're dying in the gutter. So women will ghost guys being married or living with. I've heard, I'm not the only one. I've heard about this. I've had guys write into me and tell me about it. Um, I've had guys make comments on a lot of my videos saying, oh, that happened to you. That happened to me too. Or it happened to a friend of mine, came home to an empty house or my furniture moved out, all that sort of stuff. 
So I think it happens to guys a lot more than women. I'd love to know the stats on that. I think it'd be a fraction of women would get ghosted. And it's and they'd only get ghosted because they weren't the best option for an easy lay from a guy who has abundance and options with women. I've done it to heaps of girls. I just dropped them last minute. I didn't respond to them. I just blocked them or whatever. I just didn't care. I was in a stage of my life where I was womanizing, didn't really give a shit. Um, and yeah, did some pretty bad behaviors too. Take full accountability for that. Added to the problem. Agree that the world would be a much better place if we could all just be honest. Understand that this is very normal and it happens a lot. And I have a feeling it's going to continue to do so with the rise of dating apps and social media in general. So understand that it's really not about you and it's just more about that person and their inability to have a tough conversation. So for someone watching this that ghosts people, understand that when you ghost someone, it actually ends up hurting a lot more typically than if you were to just have that honest conversation. And I think people do this for the exact opposite. They think that by just avoiding it or running away that they're making things better when in reality it just makes that other person more confused and it's just a worse way to handle it in general so keep it's a very immature thing it's a very weak cowardly spineless thing i've never heard of a guy doing that every time i've had to break up with a girl and admittedly i haven't done it many times in my life because my strategy was always to get them to break up with me when I'm dating them or end it with me, I'll just become unresponsive or whatever and let them do it. Let them think they win. Easy way out. Everyone wins because you don't want a crazy chick stalking you and carrying on, <clears throat> which I've had happen before too. So that was the best way to go about it. Let them think they've made a decision when you've already quite quit, so to speak. But that was only in short term things, guys, that we're with women for a couple of weeks or a month or something. Not Nothing serious. But women are cowardly. I've never heard of a man doing that. Like a long-term relationship was disappearing. I'm sure you hear about the guy, the whole joke, you know, the guy goes out to buy a bottle of milk and he never comes home or whatever it is. But I've never heard of a man actually properly ghosting a woman in a marriage. I've heard of guys doing shit things like, you know, yeah, fucking off with strippers and stuff like that and making really bad decisions. But it's definitely on a lower, far lower level than, um, than when guys just get absolutely smashed. Because as we know, guys, when... A uh, woman wants nothing to do with you. They're the coldest creatures on earth. Whether it's you're just dating him for two days, or you're talking him for a, to a, for a day, or you're married to him for 20 years, they will drop you like a hot rock. Like I said earlier, you will be nothing but a piece of crap on their boot. <laughs> That's why they do it, because they don't value you, because there's too many options for them out there. That's the reality. And another point is with dating apps. So you, you've got women not valuing good men. So good men being, in the past, it would have been as good, steady uh, providers, but maybe not exciting. Maybe not six foot three and jacked and all that. They're not valuing those guys. They're chewing them up and spitting them out and only going for a top percentage guys who are just banging all the other chicks and leveraging that power that they have. And 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 inversely, you've got guys that are creating the problem too. I've been that guy before. I went to the dark side. I uh, was in the dark side for a long time, uh, before and post-marriage. That are just using whatever advantages they have um, to clean up um, and, you know, be irresponsible, cowardly, lie, do what you got to do to get chicks in bed. Um, and then, yeah, delete them, block them, whatever it is. So, yeah, I've done that stuff too. So, generally, when a woman complains that they've been ghosted or blocked, it's better guy like what I used to do or a, a Chad and a Tyrone or a Dino or a Chang, Hwan, wherever you live. that in mind. Number two, it's a huge red flag. This is one of the number one red flags I could wave in your face in the beginning of a relationship that are going to signal later on in the relationship that this person is emotionally unavailable or can't have tough conversations or always acts like everything's fine even though it's not. Red flags, all relationships require healthy communication and your partner's not a mind reader, right? So you have to be able to effectively communicate what you want, what you need from that person, and then also how you're feeling. So if this person from the get-go cannot do this, that's normally a pretty big red flag that you're dodging. Honestly, guys, I think that ghosting is pretty immature and really just signals that this person can't handle these conflicts or tough situations that come up in their lives. It's kind of- all right. So, look, I'm going to call it about halfway here, guys. So if you're enjoying the channel, um, please subscribe. Um, and the best way you can help me, guys, is watch my videos through to the end. Share, like, comment, um, get me out there. 
And if you want to check out the Patreon, please do so. Link in the video description. So the, another point I'm going to make here is she said, oh, uh, communication is healthy and um, it, it, it's, it's on people to communicate what they want instead of ghosting. And what I've heard happening hasn't happened so much to me. Well, it has a little bit, but it happens to other guys that I know of. Um, but my mate, Larry, always talk about Larry. Larry's out there. He just gets his head punched in every day on dating apps or um, whether he meets a woman in person as well. They'll put these unreasonable demands on him. And so he was telling me like the other day, I always catch up with Larry for walks and we have talks and we talk about women, life, you know, whatever, whatever's going on um, at the time. We go for long walks, we talk for hours on end. Um, and he was telling me about um, this chick that he was going out with, a uh, single mum, as I told you. He loved his single mum. He's a single mum hunter, but he has children, so it's sort of, you know, I can understand why he does it. Um, and he was telling me that she was bailing him up because she'd read some book, and I don't know what, what the book was. It'd probably be The Secret or I don't even know what they call them, all these dating books, you know, that basically like the red pill version of stuff for chicks, you know, um, the whole drizzle, drizzle, whatever it is, or, or sprinkle, sprinkle type bullshit. You know, the guy's got to do this, he's got to do that, he's got to be emotionally available, and a real man loves you when they buy your things and invest in you, and he has to do this and he has to do that. And she bailed him up and said he wasn't doing one or two of the things that were on the list. She gave him his marching orders, basically. And then, like, the next week, she'd blocked and deleted him, and he couldn't believe it. He could not believe it. But that had happened, that he'd gotten abandoned that's why guys get angry about it getting ghosted and they give up on dating and modern women and dating apps because you get abandoned and treated like a piece of crap and it happens to the best of guys as i was saying i'm not saying i'm the best of guys but i had good 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 opportunities on those dating apps but it happened to me all the time i'll get flake my flake rate is probably 50 percent of women deciding that they either got a better option or that it's maybe I'm a bad idea to catch up with me. They've had too much time to think about it. They'll hang on, this guy's a bit of a steve a bit of a Brycey. Don't think I want to go there. He only wants one thing, whatever it might have been. Giving them time to make a decision. And I know it happens to a lot of men out there. So I'm just telling you from experience. Like I've, been, I've literally been driving places, um, you know, um, to take a girl out or match up for a beer or something like that. Um, you know, you've gone and made effort to get ready. It's not hard, you know, jeans and you look, you look nice. You've, made the effort, you've driven half an hour, an hour sometimes, whatever it is. Um, and you literally pull up, you park and you check your phone. Oh, I can't make it. And you're there. Like that's happened to me on more than one occasion. And I've heard it happening to heaps of other guys. That's why guys get pissed off about ghosting. Not because it's, oh, you know, they didn't want to have a hard conversation or that. You're literally wasting people's time. And you're giving them abandonment issues because... <laughs> You treat them like rubbish. You're lowering their self-esteem. I have a little window into what dating them might look like. Not all the time, of course. This is not 100% of the time that this is a red flag, but I do think a lot of the times it's people that really lack that confidence or lack the ability to have tough conversations, to address their problems, to face things head on, and to get a little bit uncomfortable sometimes. It can also show low emotional intelligence, confidence, and integrity. Not good. Tip number three that I have is that you don't need closure. I know in the moment it might feel like you do, but I promise you, you don't, and I'm gonna tell you why. If someone ghosted you, it says all you need to know about where you stand with them. There is no reason to beg them for closure. There is no reason to show up at their house asking them what went wrong because in the end, it doesn't really matter. Overthinking it and overanalyzing it is only going to cause a headache for you and honestly, it's just a waste of time because if they ghosted you, there's really nothing else to know. They didn't want to talk to you anymore and they weren't even honest enough with you to tell you that. So it's a red flag, it's a bullet dodged and you really don't need to sit there and overthink it. And it doesn't really matter why they ghosted you, right? Because in the end, they still ghosted you and that really is just the reality of it so begging for i think it's a pretty surface level like this is really generic type points you know don't overly i don't disagree with anything she's saying but she's not adding much depth so she doesn't really truly understand it from a man's perspective why men might beg or why men might want closure think about this and there's probably a lot of you guys who are watching who've had similar things happen or have had friends where said similar things have happened as i said you come home from work and the house is empty and they've moved out and you don't know why. You don't know why they resorted to that. There was no communication. Um, I didn't do this in my case, but I can understand why someone would chase somebody um, and turn up at their house or whatever it is, trying to work out what the hell's going on. And what I've heard happening to guys who have been in similar predicaments, whether it's just them just blocking them, not even living together or whatever it is, and they've gone and they've gone and turned up at the girl's house and then 
you know, it's being confrontational. Yeah, I don't recommend to do that. She's right. Don't go turn up. If they don't, if they've blocked you or they're not talking to you, they don't want to talk to you. So you turning up at their house and, and trying to force, you know, them to change their mind or beg them to change their mind, it's just going to make it worse. Um, it's like anything in life. If someone's too clingy on you and it's like a salesman trying to sell you something, you don't, you don't want it. So they, they can just, like women, men don't understand it because men a lot of the time can't switch off like a woman can switch off when they're done with you. And that's why men resort to those things and they get anxiety. Men get attached to women. Men aren't robots. I think a lot of women think that men don't have feelings, don't get attached or, or they get over things really quickly. I've heard women say things like that. That's not true. Men hold on to things for years and years. If it's hurt them badly, they might not ever um, recover um, from that, from those bad experiences of abandonment and hurt and shock um, and feelings of hopelessness that once they have recovered, they never really trust women again because they've had a really bad time. So that's why they won't understand it because I think a lot of women have really experienced it to the point of a guy ghosting, upping and disappearing out of their life. I don't think it happens very common. I think it might happen early days or if they might be dating for a couple of months. But I've heard from guys, even myself, guys, I was married and it happened to me. Um, but I, I've heard of other guys, worse than me, like full house of furniture moved out. I come home, there's nothing there. Like I came home, there was stuff there. She'd just taken the things that she wanted. But there was stuff there. I could actually still, you know, had a bed and stuff. But I've heard about guys coming home, the whole joint has been moved out by removalists. And without even knowing about it, cool, you might be arguing or something like that, but there's been no talk of a move out. There's been no talk of anything like that. And then all of a sudden they're gone. I was like, what do, you, what do you think's going to be the reaction? It's going to be shock, confusion. People want answers. And the thing is, with guys will say they want closure, and she's saying not to ask about closure, but people want to know why, and a lot of the time, guys will never know why, and that's why they find this sort of content um, to get solace that other men experience it. But, yeah, I think she doesn't really go into a level of depth. For answers or trying to get answers out of someone that ghosted you is really just a waste of your time. Yep. And I promise you, I know in that moment, it really feels like you need answers as to why, but really it doesn't matter why because they still ghosted you. And next year, I have a couple little do's and don'ts for you guys just to make your experience a little bit less awful. Number one, do feel your feelings. I know that sounds silly, but understand that it's okay to be sad about it. If you really liked someone and they ghosted you, it's okay to feel sad, but let yourself feel those things so that you can move on from it. And it's very normal to be upset when something ends that you were excited about. So when I got ghosted, I'm pretty sure I sat in my room and cried for like a couple minutes. It's all right. We need a little cry session and then we get over it. So don't feel like you need to act like a jerk or be all high and Exactly mind. right. Exactly right. So she's like, oh, I've been ghosted a couple of minutes. She was upset about it for like guys go through these experiences. They're not even better after two years. I tell you, like I've, I had my story. Um, I put out my Australian true stories video where I'm telling you experiences, uh, true stories about guys I know who went through the, probably the worst experiences with women that I've ever heard. And these are guys in my immediate network. So I can just imagine how many other guys are out there, a lot of you guys watching at home. They don't get over it ever. Just the shock and it's the world altering experience. It just turns everything you thought in life on its head. Everything you've been told, it turns it on its head. You do the right things and you get a benefit out of it. A lot of these guys... They didn't do anything wrong. They weren't Chads and Steve O's and Bryce. They weren't that. They were good guys, and good guys finish last, and good guys get smashed, unfortunately, in a lot of cases. And that's what happened to them. And um, one of those guys I talked about, Bretty, that's not his real name, that's his alias, obviously. Good old Bretty. Um, he's probably the worst one out of the lot. Larry comes in second, but Bretty, Bretty um, uh, fully has resorted to the bottle. Uh, he doesn't go anywhere. He lives with his dad. He's like 42 years old or 41 years old. Lives with his dad. Um, he just goes to work, comes home and just sits and smokes cigarettes and um, and drinks at home. And we can't get him to come out of the house. You know, he doesn't want to come with us. We try and get him out on camping trips. Like he's just, his life's over. Because he had a woman that he loved so much do that, do that to him. Um, he loved her. He was married to her. She was his teenage sweetheart, high school sweetheart. The reality, he was just super nice guy and she settled for him um, and he got treated like shit. And it was just during COVID, actually. She left him and went and lived instantly with some other guy. So she moved, she just left him, drained his bank account and then moved him with some other guy. Um, and he's never recovered from that. And he, he even said to me he would take her back if she wanted to come back to him. Like, I don't know, you can't help some guys, but life over because the woman's gone. He centered his life around her. 
Um, so these women will never understand what that's like when someone up and does that on you because they don't experience that level of betrayal um, and hurt. That's it. Like, and a lot of guys don't open up and say it and talk about it because they don't want to tell other men because other men are like, oh, you couldn't keep your, your girl happy or society will shame you for not being successful you being able to hold a woman. But as a lot of you guys know who are watching, you've had similar experiences, a lot of these women, you, you can't stop them from doing anything. They're, they're like a, a tornado. Things are going to happen. Um, and they can be destructive like a tornado and wreck your life. But the mainstream will make you believe that women are all sugar and spice and all things nice. But I think for a majority of it, them there are not true. There are some lovely women out there. But the ones I'm talking about, your dating app chicks, your ones on TikTok, or the ones I make fun of on these dating shows that I do, they wreck men's lives. They all go through their life just causing un... You can't even rack up, like I'm going to say you couldn't count or, or you couldn't put a number on the amount of damage or a value on the damage that they do to people their whole lives by discarding, being over entitled, divorcing, all that. Anyway, I'll keep going. Maybe and say things like, well, I didn't even like them anyway. It doesn't matter if you're sad, just accept the fact that you're a little bit sad, let yourself heal from it and then get over it. The biggest don't of all time that I have for you when it comes to ghosting is to not freak out and blow up their phone. If communication has slowed down with this person and they haven't necessarily ghosted you yet, I think it's okay to ask them what's up or maybe have a conversation about that and bring it up. If they ghosted and you absolutely insist on sending a message, I think you can send one and then be done. Say what you need to say. I don't recommend this actually. I would recommend just not saying anything. If they ghosted you, again, like I mentioned earlier in the video, it says everything you need to know about where they stand with you. So there really is no need to send one last message. I love a women giving these advice because once again, they don't they have an abundance that a man will never know. So yeah, or I'll agree with her. It's a very hard thing to do for someone who has a scarcity and doesn't have a lot of women in their life. And then all of a sudden this person they thought was with them has abandoned them, um, whether it be a you know one year relationship or a marriage or whatever it is. They have a huge feeling of loss and they want to know why and they want to try and make things better and they get anxious and anxiety and stressed and depressed. It's just a matter of, oh, how they don't like you, you know, forget about them. Now, these guys really struggle with that. A lot of guys really struggle with that, with those feelings of anxiety. So, like, as I said, these girls have that much abundance. You go, well, don't worry about it because they jump back on a nap um, and they just have a huge selection to start working through again. Like, it's, you know, it's like saying, oh... You lost a million bucks. Don't worry about it because, you know, she's going to get paid a million bucks next week, you know. But if a guy loses a million bucks, that was his life savings for his whole life. He's going to be pretty distraught about that. And he might, he might make a thousand bucks a week. Message, I guarantee you're not going to change their mind. And at this point, why would you want to? Blowing up their phone or acting really angry and crazy about it is not going to do anything but justify their decision to ghost you. They're going to be like, wow, really dodged a bullet with this one. Look how he reacted to this or whatever it might be. So understand that by blowing up their phone or going crazy, it really just makes you look bad. And look, I also get it. Ghosting is not the right thing to do. I don't recommend people ghost. The world would be a much better place without ghosting if everyone could just be honest. But Unfortunately, that's not the reality. So you don't want to make yourself look bad too. So handle it as a gentleman, handle it with grace. If you're a woman watching this, I would say the same thing to you. I have been guilty of doing this in the past and it made me look stupid. So I'm trying to save you all and do you a favor. So now the moment I'm sure some of you have been waiting for, the story really? of how I got ghosted. Chat so story. here we go. My sophomore year of college, I was talking to this guy for probably two to three months, I would say. I think I saw him a couple times a week for a few months. So we were not like official or anything, but I definitely felt like his girlfriend at this point. We were hanging out all the time. He was taking me out to eat. I mean, gonna, we were pretty yeah. much hanging out on a weekly yeah. basis, a couple times a week. So this Rotation. one night in particular, I was getting ready to go over to his apartment. We were gonna hang out, maybe go out to dinner. And out of nowhere, he just stopped texting me back. We had plans to hang out and then he just didn't text me. So I'm like, okay, maybe he fell asleep or something. I sent him like one more message and then the next day comes and I don't hear from him, but he watched my Snapchat story and I was like, all right, well, this sucks. So he ended up ghosting me, obviously. And I think I- I like this is such a traumatic thing. So she's remembered this. She's probably in her 30s. She's talking about sophomore year. I don't know really what that means. Is that second year college? I don't know, but- Anyway, something probably 10 years earlier, she remembers it so vividly because women don't really get a lot of rejection and ghosting in her life. But she's had this guy that had her on rotation, you know, bag and tag her and, and do a Steve O'Brien on her. 
something I probably would have done a few years back. And she's still thinking about it. And it's this huge thing. They weren't even together. Like she was just some chick that he was banging in college or university, whatever you want to call it. And as I said, you got guys who with go out with women for years or are married to them. Uh, they're women ghosts and the guy starts chasing one and to know why and they put a, a restraining order on them or something and bring the police in and turn the police system on them. <laughs> like, they will just never understand sent him like another message just saying like hey I really wish you could have just had a conversation with me and we could have talked about it if you weren't feeling it or something was off like I would have rather you just told me like I was just very honest about how I was feeling and looking back I wouldn't even send that message because it wasn't worth it it didn't change anything and I didn't get any closure out of anything so he ended up giving a bunch of dumb reasons as to why he ghosted me but in the end it would have just been better if he could have just been honest about that so I was like going abroad the next year and he was like talking about how he didn't want to get serious because I was leaving and whatever which made total sense and if he would have just sat down and had that conversation with me I would have 100% understood of course I probably would have been disappointed but I would have been okay and I would have gotten over it so it actually hurt a lot worse that he ghosted me so yeah all for all of you that the ghost things like nice but she made out like this was his big story the story I just told you earlier and about myself and that happened to a lot of other guys and guys I know Jesus Christ getting abandoned ghosted um, stonewalled whatever you want to call them they just don't experience it because men aren't as don't have those sociopathic traits as much. Yeah, sure, you do. You have some guys out there, scam artists and Tinder swindler and you know, Dirty John and all these weirdos who are sociopathic and, and and do similar things. But women do it on such a greater scale. And you know what you get to? They take all your money at the, on the back end too. It isn't just women get yeah. She's got some hurt feelings. She remembers that she felt hurt. And yeah, it's not nice. The guy ghosted her you know she was on his rotation probably and he just didn't want to get connected to her and yeah he was you know could have been stuffed with it and he probably had other options but did she lose half her life savings or more or her pension or her house or anything like that no she just had a bit of sore feelings or a bit of hurt feelings so once again we will never truly understand what it's like to be abandoned whether it's even just dating women can be so harsh and cold um, and ruthless, as I say, ruthless, cold. Um, they'll step over your dead body. You, they'll take everything from you if they can once they're done with you. And you'll be lying there, shivering, the, help, help. And you think she's walking up to help you. And now nah, she just puts a hand in your pocket. Oh, she's like, oh, there's two bucks in there. Thank you. Just kicks your body fucking into the gutter. You roll into the gutter and die. You know, like I know it sounds extreme, but that's sort of what happens. Like anyone who has been through, through a divorce or a horrible divorce, you tell me. When it ended, was it done respectfully? If you were the one on the other end of the the news? Most of the time it's not. They either run away, they do bad things, they cheat, they um, avoid accountability, make up bullshit excuses, and do really bad stuff. So it isn't just the ghosting, but yeah. Let's say I haven't been ghosted, I have by someone that I was legitimately dating for probably two and a half, three months. So <laughs> that one stung a little bit more because it was someone that I like trusted and had been seeing so it wasn't just some like random guy that i met online that didn't text me back like this was a person that i had been hanging out with every single week for up to three months wow. and then after i got back from being abroad of course then he wanted to text me all the time and talk to me and whatever it was so just don't ghost people it says all you need to know about where you stand with them and if i could go back to the situation that i was in i would tell myself courtney you don't need closure you don't need to send a text telling him you wish he would have just trying to be so relatable but it's just not really relating especially when her this video <clears throat> is here it's uh, i don't know if she she's a chick who talks to men i'm not sure what her channel's about i haven't watched any of her other other videos but it's no you, you can't it, we can't i can't relate to this and i'm not saying hey I think it comes from a good place that she's trying to make this video and talk about it. But it's like saying, oh, yeah, talking about someone who might have lost a whole bunch of money in investments and then someone's making a video. I know what it's like to be cleaned up, you know, um, get a margin call on you and you lose your house and all your money and you're in debt and basically your life's over. Yeah, I lost five bucks on the pokies once. Like, it's, it's just the same, the same sort of thing. Anyway, guys, that's enough of a rant for me today. Thank you for watching this far. Um, if you have made it, I really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one.